The Jotna, or giants, are regularly portrayed as enemies of gods and men in Norse mythology, but were they actually the subjects of cultic rituals and worship? Scratching beneath the surface of writings and rituals, it is possible to discern that, far from being the bane of all Nordic cultic devotion, the denizens of Jotunheim played a key role in religious observance. Have the hellish beasts who were said to devour humans been misunderstood, and do they represent the beneficiaries of vital sacrificial rites? Even the revered and somewhat thuggish god Thor, who was known to regularly smite Jotuns with his hammer Mjolnir, intimated that this endeavour was not a mythic quest for extermination, but a fine cosmological and even ecological balancing act, a necessary culling to allow men to thrive. He says to Odin, Mikil mindi et Jotna, ef alir lifti, vor mienar mana undir mithgardi. This translates to, the kin of giants would grow mighty if all of them were allowed to live. If so, there would be few people in Midgard. The binary concepts of good and evil, as reinforced by Christian dogma, were far more nuanced in pre-Christian Norse societies, as evidenced by the necessary creative destruction wrought by Ragnarok. It is also seen in Odin giving up his eye to drink from Mimir's well and gain wisdom, a different form of sight, or in his hanging on the world tree Yggdrasil to gain knowledge of other worlds and be able to understand the mystical power of the runes. In fact, it punctuates Norse mythology and religion at vital and pivotal moments. As we shall see, this theme of loss to gain or sacrifice is where the Jotna come in. There is also a bizarre ritual which sees the sanctification and worship of a horse phallus which potentially invokes Jotna as the subject of veneration. The ritual included the words Thigi Mornir, Theti Bluti, Do Mornir, accept this sacrifice. The word Mornir could refer to a sword, a phallic reference in and of itself, but it could also refer to a female giant. Does this allude to an older ritual and conception of female giants being equated with female notions of fertility? There are numerous examples in Norse mythology of sexual union between a god and giantess leading to the possession of a desirable object. This can be seen in Odin's relationship with Gunloth, which gives him access to the vitally important mead of poetry of Suttung. This mead was not just a drink, but a shamanistic conduit for knowledge, information, problem-solving and frenzy, Odin's primary characteristics. The alliances through the sacred marriages and sexual union of gods and giants are essential and, even more significantly in the Norse mindset, fateful. They drive progress and transcendence. Does this perhaps also represent a fertility rite or Hieros Gamos, a broader union of earth and sky bringing about rebirth and renewal after winter? This is a very old concept, rooted in reconstructed beliefs of the Proto-Indo-Europeans the Norse are descended from. The bringing together of giant and god could also represent a less confrontational form of chaos kampf, a cosmological balancing of opposing forces which leads to growth in the cerebral or spiritual sense. Then there is Skadi, a wilderness goddess who also happens to have been a Jotun. She was associated with hunting, mountains, skiing and winter. She was described as the daughter of the giant Thiazi, who married the Vanir god Njordr as compensation following the god's killing of her father. As a note on the previously mentioned word Mornir or Morn, Thiazi is referred to as Marnar Fadir, father of Morn. As well as being associated with the sea, Skadi's spouse Njordr was a fertility god, particularly in terms of crop success, so the match, despite being rather ill-fated, highlights the suitability, or acceptance at least in Norse mythology, of such a union between a Jotun and a significantly important deity. Going further, in the poetic Edda, Odin refers to Skadi as the shining bride of the gods. And her significance seems to continue to the present day. There are a group of names strongly represented in the middle and south of Sweden and southeastern Norway, like Skadevi, Skedvi, Skek, Skjell, etc. These have been suggested to have been the first part of Skedius, genesis of Skedja, etymologically linked to Skadi. This form of the name is commonly linked to well-known terms of cultic places. The god Loki is also the offspring of a Jotun, Fabati, and a goddess called Laufi. Giants were also seen in the transcendent process of death and funerary rites, with Hyrakin, the giantess who, according to Snorri, was summoned when nobody else was able to push the boat with the dead Baldur into the sea, thus allowing him to complete his journey to another world. Therefore, giants can be and are seen as essential and, going further, as symbiotic partners of the gods in Norse ritual traditions. 
Whether they were worshipped outright is unclear, but the entire pinnings of Norse cosmology would not and could not exist without them. They play a key role in all facets of life, from birth to sacrifice and attainment to death. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe. And you can also support the channel on Subscribestar via the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.